Take us back a year, but also forward. What exactly has been the effect on Wells Fargo employees? What did you do? And maybe as important, when do you think you're going to be able to get them back in the office? Oh, well, well th thanks for having me, David. It's great to be here. Uh, I guess I, mean, I'm, I, I think back to uh, uh, a year ago, and it seems like yesterday in, in some respects. Uh, I had been at the company for literally just about four months, and I was still getting to know people and trying to travel around and understand what our issues were, what our opportunities were. Um, uh, and then this hit, and I'll never forget, I was on a call with uh, some folks at Johns Hopkins where I'm involved, and both the words they said and the seriousness of their voices made me understand just how um, uh, how serious uh, uh, this issue was about to unfold. And first thing that went through my mind is, um, you know, we have a responsibility uh, in terms of the way uh, we need to care for our employees, um, but also our customers and our communities. But, you know, first and foremost, you sit there and say, you know, what do you have to do uh, to ensure the safety of, uh, of the people that we're responsible for? So um, we, like many other institutions, just did everything we can to uh, uh, enable those that could work from home to work from home. And um, very, very quickly, and still today, we have around 200,000 people working remotely. And at the same time, we've got just an amazing group of dedicated people that come in every day to serve their customers. And we've tried to figure out how to keep them safe, everything from masks to uh, barriers, social distancing, uh, utilizing drive-ups, uh, appointments to uh, to keep the traffic down wherever possible. While, re while recognizing we've got to still continue to serve our, our customers um, who need us. Do you have um, a sense of when you might be able to bring some of those people back? You know, that well, right now we have about 90% of our branches open. We had dipped down to around 70% uh, at the peak of the crisis. We're now back to 90. And when we think about bringing our employees back, you know, um, I mean, I, I'm a firm believer that uh, really great things do come from people being together. But first and foremost, this is this is a healthcare issue. It's extremely serious, and so, you know, we as a management team, and I personally am not interested in rushing people back to the office because I think that's the right thing to do. We're going to bring people back when it's safe, and we're going to give people notice. So, you know, I'm certainly hoping with you know the uh, the increase in vaccinations that uh, you know it's it's sometime around the summer, towards the end of the summer, when we can get back to life as normal. But we're going to play it by year, and it's going to be city by city, state by state. And we'll make those decisions when we think it's safe. That, to me, is the most important thing of all. One of the things that for all of us this pandemic really brought home was some of the differential effects that the pandemic had on different communities, particularly minority communities, black communities and Hispanic communities across the country. I'm curious about what Wells Fargo is doing to address that. And let me be more specific here for a moment. There is a shareholder initiative that was proposed to Wells Fargo and to Bank of America about doing an audit of diversity that you've resisted. Why did you resist it? Why not just do it? Well, I think first of all, I mean, just just to go back to where you started, you know, there's no question that that the pandemic um, has not affected people equally. I mean, when you look at just uh, white unemployment rate is five and a half percent today, black unemployment rate is still ten percent, and Hispanic is as at eight and a half. So, you know, the impact is disproportionate, and we as a company are doing an extraordinary amount, both internally and externally. Uh, to figure out how we can have a direct impact, but we can also work with others. One of the things that we did was we took all of the money that uh, we were um, uh, entitled to earn from the government last year through PPP, which for us was over $400 million, and said, we want to put that back to those that actually can help those that are most in need. So $250 million of that is going to help CDFIs that can really help the underserved communities, another $100 million is going to small businesses, and then $50 million for technical assistance. Uh, we ourselves have committed to doubling uh, the leadership uh, ranks of uh, the Black community within Wells Fargo within the next five years. We have operating committee representation today, which we didn't have when I took this role. Uh, we have a new role, diversity, equity, inclusion, including responsible for driving uh, a more effective business proposition for diverse segments in all of our businesses. That reports directly to me. So we're doing a tremendous amount um, and uh, we're going to continue to look for ways uh, that we can do things that are really, really impactful. It's not about headlines. It's about doing things that are going to actually uh, make a meaningful difference, both within the company and in our communities. But not an audit. You know, I mean, we're doing our own work to make sure that we understand everything in terms of what all the facts are. 
uh, and we're going to continue to disclose more. And so, you know, um, I'm, 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 I'm confident that the work we're doing uh, is going to achieve the goals that we all have set for ourselves. We're seeing the economy about, we believe, to take off here uh, because there's been a lot of monetary and fiscal stimulus for it. It's benefiting the banks, including your bank, right across the board. At the same time, when you came to Wells Fargo last fall, you had a little bit of a one hand tied behind your back with the asset cap from the Fed. When do you think you might be able to get rid of that? Yeah, David, listen, everyone asked me that question, and I wish I could be more specific. What I can tell you is that uh, we know the work that we've got to do to get the asset cap lifted. Uh, we're doing it, and I'm confident that we will get the work done. Um, in the meantime, we have an amazing franchise. We come into work every day, and we serve our customers uh, extraordinarily well, and it's the dedication of the you know, of all my partners and teammates around the country that do it. And so, you know, we're going to continue to work through everything that we need to work through. Um, and then when we can grow the asset base of the company, we will do it. We're seeing some pretty remarkable projections on GDP growth in 2021 and even into 2022. What are you looking at in terms of overall growth and how could that specifically translate into business for Wells Fargo? How does it help Wells Fargo particularly? Sure. Well, listen, we are a, you know, predominantly a U.S. bank and, you know, we live and breathe uh, by the success of U.S. consumers, small businesses, middle market companies and larger companies as well. So, um, you know, to the extent that they're doing well, we do well. And when they're not doing well, we won't do so well. So, you know, what we see today is clearly, um, uh, you know, remarkable progress uh, with the vaccine, uh, you know, with the rollout of the vaccines. Um, but, you know, consumer demand is extremely high. Over the last couple of weeks, we, like others, have seen material increases in consumer spend. And that's before, uh, you know, the stimulus checks have arrived, which is which which are which are uh, uh, the deposits are just arriving today. So you put all those things together, plus ongoing support of the Fed. Uh, and we're really bullish in terms of what the fourth, third and fourth quarters could look like. And, you know, we could see, you know, GDP growth of, you know, six, six and a half percent for sure. Um, ultimately, that's good for the entire country, as long as the recovery is even and all benefit, not not some industries and not some segments of the population. And that was exactly what I was going to ask you about the evenness, because Wells Fargo is a full service bank. You deal with small and medium sized companies, not just the big ones. The big ones, a lot of them have done pretty well. Are you seeing a pickup in the small and the medium? You know, I would say what we're starting to see is um, we were seeing uh, loan utilization declining. Um, and not a lot of demand for loans. That appears like it could be bottoming, um, which does say something about the willingness of those companies to invest in the way they're thinking about the future. It's all very real time, um, you know, but as I said, when you look at all of the things that line up uh, to what could be a very strong second half of the year, uh, that's certainly the way uh, those businesses will be thinking about it, I think.